know, it's about 11.30 and we've got maybe six hours or something to try to catch a big muskie. And this should be really interesting because I'm fishing with a guy who's a really interesting guy. Queen Mary's coming in for landing. I thought I should have a sign in the boat that says we didn't fall in, we're fishing in the other boat. What a way to hold a spot. <laughs> now all we need is a mannequin. A mannequin either with his hands in his pockets and a bobber. There you go. Or one of those ones that actually moves. You think this will be big enough? I hope not. My trolling motor strangled my uh, depth finder. Yeah. When uh, my dog stepped on the on the deal, you're gonna run the boat, because this is your lake. So you gotta run it from back here. And uh, the boat is too long for the, for the cable. For the cable, but I've got an extension cable that normally I'd put underneath the gunnel, you know, yeah. and bury yeah. it and have a plug, but we haven't had time to do it. Yeah, because it's only like yeah. November. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I've been really busy messing with muskies this summer. I was even kind enough to share a few with people who'd never caught one. You got him out of there? I don't know if I can lift him, Larry, but... He's a fat one, isn't he? Whoa. Nice little thick. Look at the back on her. She's really what? fat. Really a thick fish. Isn't he handsome? That's <laughs> well, way to go if you got Thanks, it. Jack. <laughs> I think Jack was in on about seven of them that day. You're on your own, Troy. It's awesome. <laughs> Still now. Get the trolling motor off. I better put the camera down and get the net. I even went all the way to Walker, Minnesota and fished a muskie tournament with my friends Frank and Josh. That's my first one, but it was nothing. <laughs> We're on Leech Lake, and this is a giant muskie tournament. How many boats are in this thing? Like 600? 600. 650 guys. Uh, this is the Frank Schneider Memorial Tournament, and this is the very first morning. Feeling <laughs> Frankie. <laughs> it's good. What a way to start off your muskie career, Frankie. 42 and a half in the biggest muskie tournament in the country. Bam! Whopper, plopper. Yep. Here the net. We're gonna find out now, aren't we? <laughs> Good job, Liz. Here's a skinny one. Oh yeah, we're good. We're Typical good go there. leech, leech lake muskie. Yeah, all right. We got a couple of minutes left. 40, uh, 42, 42, 42, 42, he hit. Okay, let's get a photograph. Frankie got one this morning. I got one now. And this is really fun. I'm not a tournament guy. I don't even like tournaments. Mmm, I love that smell. But this is a real interesting deal. You get 600 and some musky guys. They're not all cranked up. Some of them maybe are. But it's more of a kind of a get together. And uh, I think there's 20 some odd lakes involved. And so there's like nobody around. You're not bumping into each other. This is fun. This is a good deal. Number three, oh, if she comes in on the original whopper plopper with no eyes. Frank. Thank you, sir. That is my favorite lure of all time. Thirtieth one on the same same exact prototype lure. Nope. Ah, thirty-eight. Back she goes. 
38. Oh, she's ready to go right now. Sweet. There you go, buddy. Get him. Here we go, end of the net. I didn't bring a, a real cameraman, so the guy shooting this is my buddy Josh. And uh, this line you see in the water all over the place is his, because he quick dropped it and picked up the camera. That's gonna measure. All right, Larry. 43. 43. Good job, man. You think that was the same one before? I don't know. Can never go wrong throwing them something they haven't seen before. We've got uh, hundreds and hundreds of people here. Everybody's talking about follows. We're throwing lures that these fish have never seen before, and I know they've never seen them because I made them. And they're biting our baits. Well, we didn't win the tournament, but we sure didn't embarrass ourselves. We had a super time and met some great people. Just feeling lucky out there. I've joined up with musky fanatic Bob Turgeon, who's an excellent angler that specializes in metro water. We're doing a you show me yours and I'll show you mine kind of a deal. The reel that Bob is using and the one I'm using right now offer quite a contrast. This is a, th a 300E Curado and I'm throwing a Mr. Wiggly with it. The easiest bait in the tackle box to reel in. It's really a good idea, especially when it's cold out, I think, to switch up. Throw one like this for a while, throw the big one for a while, and just change where your hand is instead of being way out here, maybe way out in here, and so on. You know, Larry, one of the things that's, that's really made a big difference for me is going to some of like the light saltwater tackle, like the 16M. It, it, I can pull these big baits all day with way less fatigue and present them a lot more efficiently. And I think that's, you know, when we talk about taking things to the next level, that's one of the things that really makes a difference. Separate yourself from the pack. He promptly pulls out a 14 inch long lure and explains his figure eight theory, plus a few other things. The figure eight gives you an opportunity to close the deal on a fish that has not eaten on the standard retrieve. So every figure eight fish is a bonus fish because it wouldn't have eaten on the way in, it already had a chance. So. Now I could argue that the problem with the, the reason you had to figure eight is because you weren't sexy enough on the way in. How do you like my cool see-through deck extension slash tackle box that holds about a million lures? I got it from Bob Schmidt at Just In Case about the same cost as a plain old regular deck extension, plus it holds all my lures and tools. I gotta show you something quite cool. How deep is it right here? Uh, we're in 15 right here. Oh, okay, good. The weeds are gonna top out at about five. All right. So if we're running three, four, five feet down. Yeah, I'll run her down about five feet. Lower this down to the bottom. And, uh, Push the down button. Yeah. It's a cool deal. It's very cool. A very highly cool deal. Very it's cool. also with live with a live bait. It's sure. very effective. Sure. Sure. Oh, a lot of rules. A lot of lures. I mean, yes. Depth right. controls everything. Right. Right. So. And you can leave it slide. Yeah. Or you can give it a wrap. Yeah. You can rubber binder it yeah. so it yeah. stays fixed. It's, yeah. it's a good idea. Yeah, absolutely. You can run a bait and. That normally would flow out in the surface at high speed at yep. any depth you want. Yeah. And, no, run and no big uncle lead. Yep. We're coming up just over a little hump. My uh, lure is down eight, so just so I don't catch any weeds. 
I'll bring her up. It's really contour trolling, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it is. It's it's it saves a lot of screwing around. It really does. And now you can see we're starting to drop a little. Just getting outside. And I'll drop her back down. This one should work. My goodness, that's a big one. I'm almost too old to throw this one. I think I got a couple years left. You're gonna I can, cast I can still, You cast them. You cast it out, rip it in, go see the massage place at the end of the day after you catch your fish. Speaking of big lures, let me show you a couple of the latest things I've been messing with. I've made a mold that duplicates the shad lure. This thing works just perfectly, but what I'd really like would be for it to be a lot bigger. These are odorless mineral spirits. Put the mold in the mineral spirits and kind of cover it up and give it about a day. I've let this thing soak for a day and a half. And look at how much it's grown. Whoa, look at that. <laughs> there you have it. The original and uh, the sort of the, big, the the bigger one. I can't wait to feel What I'll do is even it all off and uh, make another mold and uh, I have another lure. Cool, huh? this out of here. Mm -hmm. This will give me the ability to bend it up if I need to. If the lure is too too wild and wobbly in the water, I'd bend this up. If it's uh, too tight, I'd maybe bend it down a little bit. It's going to take a little work, but not much. This is like Wiggly Senior. He hasn't got a lot of hook in him. Let's see how he looks just out in the water all by himself. Big Wiggly didn't produce for Bob and I. Actually, nothing did. But he did the job for my fishing buddy Josh on his last and biggest muskie of the season. You know, Bob, I brought the hydrophone with me. I promised that I'd let you hear it. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'll hook up the, the hydrophone microphone and David will just keep shooting because it's connected to yeah. his, his camera and I'll give you the earphones and you can listen to the, some of these lures and you'll, you'll get a kick out of it. Oh girl. Exactly. You know, there's definitely, there's more, you know, in terms of the figure eight, the noise accelerates when you go into the figure eight, the rod, the line, you know, I think you had mentioned like the, the line acts like a guitar string almost, and you can definitely, and that may be one of the triggering things of the figure eight is literally, as that bait comes in, you start swishing it around, the whole, the whole environment that's down there starts to increase in intensity. The stimulus is increased. Yeah. And you heard what the double blade yeah, sounds yeah, like. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're hearing it land? Yep. Okay. Sounds like a heartbeat almost. Thump, 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 thump. My contention has been that the lures that seem to attract the biggest fish in the average are the quieter ones, not yeah. the louder ones. Yeah. Which is a Yeah, you can hear the blade. Boy, that is really different. I mean that sounds like you're like you're ticking the edge of a wooden table. Yeah. And it's not hitting anything. No. It's just spinning. Looks like it should all be kind of splash. Mm -hmm. And you hear a little of the splash, but I mean, if you take the rattle out of this lure, this is 
a pretty quiet lure. Breaking in the now, surface. Now, when you do that, you hear. Breaking the surface big. is loud. It's really big, or if you have a lure right. that Whoa. goes. I just had a big fish fall. He just pooped. Did you see him? No, but I see him. I just had a 50 incher follow in. I looked down, I see him tailing away, and I'm like, oh, jeez. Well, that's what it takes to get him to come. around. Yeah. Well, like I said, maybe you'll be the first guy to hear a 50 incher bite a oh, little bit. Oh, wouldn't that have been crazy? Tell me what it sounds like. Yeah. That one sounds like you're putting China away. Really? It does. Now it sounds like a helicopter landing with an occasional piece of china hitting. Clink, 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 clink. Here, land? Yep. By far the loudest, loudest, that, you know, that I can hear. Wow, that was really cool. You know, Larry, it makes you wonder if the next category of, of musky fishing, the next level is going to be that we listen to every lure and categorize its sound level and its vibrations, and we'll have one successful lure, we'll be able to put other ones into play that have a similar sound and might be just a little bit different, and that might be the next step. What this does is gives us a little baby step into a world that we really don't know too much about. But we know these animals are living in a medium that's wired for sound, yeah. oh, it's it's not for sight. And I'm thinking on the box, it says it's 8 inches long, it dives to 12 feet, it's purple and green, and it operates within this... This wavelength. Yeah. 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 Just so maybe we this can... This level in this wavelength. The environment that we humans live in is wired for sight. Fish live in an environment that's wired for sound. It's quite likely sound is as important to a fish as sight is to you and I. But what sounds do fish like and which do they not? I'm really not sure, but my fishing buddy Josh and I are working on it, and I promise we'll keep you posted. Look at the boil! Huge boil! <laughs> this isn't a three-footer. Go, Mojo! Look at the... Mojo. Oh! No worries, you. <laughs> it's a heavy fish and all that. I saw it's head. It's a, it's a good 30-pound uh, fish. Oh. oh, smokers! I got much. Up on the surface. I'm trying. Jesus. Oh. 50 inches. Oh. Uh, 49, maybe 50. Oh. Nice work, Josh. That's a long one. Holy crap. That's a long one. <laughs> wow! <laughs> what a day! <laughs> Look at this one! <laughs> There's your measurement. Pinch the tail, right? Yep, right there. 51? 
get her back in, huh? That's my buddy Josh. <laughs> Can I have a picture later? Oh, sorry, Do you have a camera? I lost her. <laughs> She's free. Holy smokes, I couldn't even get my hand around her tail. She was so wide. Oh my, what do you think, Mojo? Hey, Larry, I'm hoping you got some of this on board because I'm not coming unless you've got it. I don't get in a boat without it. Go, boys!